And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now trade talks have begun in Allen Park as the Detroit Lions who currently are in possession of the number two overall pick in this year's draft have been very very clear that they are open for business and that they are willing to trade away the number two pick for sufficient value in in an interview and in, a and in a press conference with the media yesterday or a few days ago brad holmes was very open about the fact that they have been hosting calls from certain nfl teams and that there have been a few discussions already about what it would take to trade up to the number two overall spot and today we are going to talk about this scenario we're going to talk about some of the teams that could trade up to number two why they may trade up to number two and kind of speculate what teams might be in the the market for the number two overall selection so with that being said and without any further ado let's get right into taking a look at potential trade-up teams and teams that may be interested in the number two overall selection now first off i want to start with the history of top 10 trades because it doesn't happen all that often that a team trades up within the top 10 let alone the top five and very very rarely does this occur but obviously with brad holmes's press conference the other day there are teams that are interested in the number two overall pick now the most recent example of a top five trade happening would be of course last year where the san francisco 49ers gave up three first round picks and a third round pick in order to trade miami for their number three spot they gave up two they gave up three firsts and a third to move up nine spots in the nfl draft to pick and select trade lance with the number three overall selection but that of course is not the only time that this has happened in 2018 the new york jets who sat sixth overall in the 2018 nfl draft gave up the number six pick the number 37 pick the number 52 pick and pick 169 with an additional second round pick for 2019 in return to move up just three spots to the number three overall selection to pick San Darnold. And then going all the way back to 2012, a decade ago, the market was still in a very similar position with the Washington with the Washington Redskins giving up three firsts and a second to move up four spots with the St. Louis Rams at the time to select Robert Griffin the third. Now, obviously, all of these scenarios and all of these situations currently have involved quarterbacks. That does not mean that they have to, but generally, if a team is willing to give up that much value and that much capital, you are likely moving up for a quarterback. That does present a problem with the Detroit Lions as this year's quarterback class is significantly weaker than last year's and is significantly weaker than what next year's is projected to be. So likely, there will not be a team to move up for a quarterback unless one team truly falls in love with Malik Willis. And I think that is possible, right? Malik Willis is a great great prospect. Malik Willis is the definition of a project quarterback, somebody that you sit for a year, but somebody with elite athleticism, somebody with elite arm strength, really, really good arm talent, is willing to learn, is willing to be coached. He is a phenomenal prospect in this year's class and a team could fall in love with his potential and not necessarily what he is in 2021 but what he can be and what he might be in 2023 or 2024 or you know farther down the line what he's going to be in 2026 2027 and what he can develop into so that is of course always an option and that is of course always is a scenario that a team like the seahawks a team like the football team a a football team that doesn't have an established quarterback yet gets really needy love falls in love with Malik Willis or falls in love with Matt Corral and decides this is our guy 
right? With draft rumors that the Lions might take Malik Willis at two, this is our guy. We need this guy, and they may give up a ton in order to trade for him, but I would not bank on that scenario happening, and I wouldn't bet on it if I were the Detroit Lions. More likely, somebody's gonna fall in love with an offensive tackle. This class may be weak at the quarterback position, but it is loaded with offensive linemen at the top of the draft with Evan Neal, Ikem Aquanu, and Charles Cross all likely going within the top 10, if not the top 15 selections of this year's NFL draft. And there are no shortage of teams that could use an elite offensive tackle in the NFL, right? When talking about rebuilds, first thing you need is a quarterback. The second most important position on the field is the offensive tackle. And usually it's the offensive tackle to the quarterback's blind spot that you need in order to protect your franchise quarterback. And again, there are a lot of really good offensive tackles in this year's class that I believe a team could be willing to move up to get, especially knowing Jacksonville could go with an offensive tackle at number one. He was Houston could go with an offensive tackle at number three. The Jets could go with an offensive tackle at number four. That is three offensive tackles. The big three off the board, one, three, and four. And the Lions have even been in the mix recently, and there have been rumors saying they might take that offensive tackle, which personally I don't see the point of. I don't see the, the realistic ability for the Lions to draft an offensive tackle yet again in the top 100 or in the top 10 when... They drafted one at seven a year ago, and he played really, really well, and our offensive line is already kind of complete. So I don't see the Lions taking one, but as far as the Jags, the Jets, and the Texans, they are all very realistic options in order to take an offensive tackle in this year's upcoming class. And if a team lowered down, you know, I'm talking like Seattle at nine, Atlanta at eight, Washington at 11, or maybe a team even, even farther down, feels like they need an offensive tackle, that their offensive tackle is that one missing piece, I really think you could see a big time trade in order to jump New York, in order to jump Houston, in order to jump, you know, the, not necessarily Jacksonville, but in order to get that second tackle, in order to get one of the big three tackles in this year's class, you will likely need a top 10, if not a top five pick in this year's class. And the Lions are I think are the ones that are the most open to trading and the one team that you can kind of be safe that they're not going to take that offensive tackle, that they're not going to take that offensive pick, so they'll be more willing to trade it away. Now, with that being the case, if the Lions do end up trading to a team, I would expect at least a 2022 first round pick, so the team's first round pick this year, a 2023 first round pick, especially if they're moving up from anywhere farther than a sixth, seventh overall pick in the NFL draft, and I would expect at least a third round pick either this year or next. I think that's very fair, very comparable draft assets to what has been given up in the past. And I know it's not a quarterback, but you can argue that an offensive tackle and a quality offensive tackle, let alone a top tier one, is more valuable than a quarterback at some points in a franchise's history. So with that being the case, I do have a couple of key teams that I think could be willing to trade up for an offensive tackle. Number one being the Houston Texans, right? Houston sits at number three, just one spot behind the Detroit Lions. And I think this one is not necessarily likely so much as it is possible. The Houston Texans are definitely in the market for an offensive tackle with the number three overall pick. They have now started over with a brand new quarterback who last year took 44 sacks on the NFL season, which was the ninth highest in the NFL. If you pair him with Laramie Tunsil, that gives you a really good, really young offensive line core, especially at the two most valuable offensive line positions being the tackles on the boundary. You start off with arguably one of the safer picks in the NFL draft if you are the GM for the Houston Texans in a brand new regime with a brand new coaching staff. You give Davis Mills two top 10 tackles at their ceilings, right? Laramie Tunsil, I'd say, is a top 10 tackle. Iki Maquanu and Evan Neal, I think, have that potential to be top 15, top 10 tackles in the NFL at their prime and after a year or two of development. You give Davis Mills an offensive line to work with. He already showed you some flashes in year one as a rookie who stepped up when he wasn't even supposed to. And, you know, you start your, I guess, rebuild or you continue your rebuild in a very, very solid direction. If Evan Neal goes number one, I think that it is possible that Texans maybe fear that the, the Detroit Lions may take a offensive tackle at number two, or they fear that somebody else may trade up to that number two overall spot and they give up not necessarily a ton of draft capital, right? If it's the Houston Texans, I would expect it to be 
more like the Mitch Trubisky trade where it's a first, two thirds, and like a fifth round pick, right? Not a ton, not sacrificing your entire draft class, but giving up enough in order for the Detroit Lions to say, okay, yeah, we'll move down. We'll give you this pick. We'll verify that you get your offensive tackle and we're not going to cost you too much for the pick. But for the rest of these teams, I believe that, that they could give up even more than that because as where the Houston Texans is more of like an assurancey case, right? Where it's like, okay, we're probably going to get this guy, but we want to make sure nobody jumps us in the process. The rest of these teams actually have to jump the Houston Texans and in some cases the Jets, the Giants, and you know the rest of the top five in order to get their top offensive tackle. The second team I think is really honestly a very real candidate to trade up to number two is the New York Jets. The New York Jets a season ago gave up 53 sacks. That was the fourth most sacks in the NFL, and their pressure rate on the quarterback wasn't much better. That offensive line was not very good a season ago. It gave Zach Wilson very, very little time in the pocket, and despite what some people might say, right, I've had people in my comments saying, okay, is that Noah fan? Or I've had people in the, my comments saying, okay, George Fant was an elite tackle a season ago. He was not an elite tackle a season ago. That Jets offensive line was really, really poor. George Fant can move around. Ike McQuanu can move around. Evan Neal can move around. But having Mekhi Becton and Ike McQuanu on that offensive line would give Zach Wilson a really good structural foundation and it would keep your potential franchise quarterback on his feet to make more plays like we saw late in the season, right? I wouldn't go as far as to say Zach Wilson was an elite quarterback to end the year but there were a couple of really impressive plays and a couple of really impressive throws that flashed the potential that Zach Wilson can give you if you give him time. He played through injury. He was injured for part of the season because of that offensive line. Again, they gave up the fourth most sacks in the NFL, so you can't tell me that they don't need offensive line help. Ike Mokwanu can play any position outside of the center position, and better yet, you again, kind of like the Texans, you solidify those tackle positions. You give your quarterback ample protection and you let him do the rest. Now, I believe the Seahawks are also in a position to take an offensive tackle. Seattle has been notorious for having very little offensive line help for Russell Wilson in the past, and going into a rebel, I think this is their opportunity to take a fresh start. They're currently sitting top 10, a place they haven't been in a very long time, and they have the opportunity in a weakened quarterback class to really build up the offensive line for the successor of Russell Wilson, especially if that successor is going to be Drew Locke. Drew Locke does need some protection. He's not as mobile as Russell Wilson. Can't, you know, make things on the run. Can't improvise like Russell Wilson. He needs protection. And I really think Seattle could be an opportunity. And I think Seattle could be a real option in order to move up to the number two overall pick. Again, they would have to jump New York. They would have to jump Houston. They would have to jump Atlanta, who I think is also possible, but I will not talk about today. They would have to jump four to five different teams in order to get that offensive tackle that they need, which again, would drive up the price even more for that number two overall spot. And then I think kind of a dark horse team, a team that maybe not a lot of people have talked about, but a team that makes a lot of sense would be the Washington Commanders. Washington just very recently traded for a brand new quarterback in Carson Wentz, who throughout his career has been very up and very down. But at his highs, Carson Wentz can lead a team to the playoffs and Carson Wentz can lead a team, a good team to the Super Bowl if, again, if he stays healthy. Right, Washington currently sits at the 11th overall spot in this year's NFL class, which honestly, which coincidentally is the exact number of picks away that the Niners were from the Miami Dolphins, right? The Niners went from 12 to three. Washington would be going from 11 to two. It's a nine spot difference, and I would expect an extremely similar return on investment to what the 49ers gave up a season ago. Now, Washington last year gave up 43 sacks on the season, which was the 10th most in the NFL. Their defense is good when healthy, right? Chase Young, that defensive line in general, you know, Chase Young, Montez Sweat, um, you know, their defensive tackles are really good. They have a couple good players in their secondary as well. They really need the offense to go with it, right? Now they have a quarterback in Carson Wentz that on his good days can get the ball to his wide receivers, can scramble, can improvise, can make plays out of nothing, and can take a team to the playoffs. But they need an offensive line. They just love Brandon Scherf in free agency. Carson Wentz needs to stay healthy if the Washington Commanders have an opportunity to go to the playoffs. If they want to go to the playoffs, Carson Wentz needs to stay healthy because he is their only chance to do so. Being one year 
removed from winning the NFC East. They obviously and very clearly have playoff aspirations for next year with Chase Young coming back, with Montez Sweat coming back, with a couple key free agent signings and a really good draft. They can make it back to the playoffs and it could all start with a primary and with a franchise offensive tackle like Ike McQuanu or Evan Neal or even Charles Cross to start it all off. So with all that being said, that is life for you guys today. Those, I think, are the big four teams that have been in contact with the Detroit Lions. I think the Texans are probably not in contact yet, but I feel like come draft night, they could be, again, just as that assurance, kind of like the Mitch Trubisky trade, where, you know, it's like, okay, we're probably going to get him at three, but just in case somebody wants to jump us, we're going to trade up, give up a little bit extra value in order to ensure our pick. The Jets arguably the worst offensive line in the NFL last year. They gave up a ton of sacks. Their quarterback got hurt as a result. I think two of their quarterbacks actually got hurt as a result of their poor offensive line. So they could be willing to jump the Texans, right, in order to get arguably the top prospect instead of the second or third guy. The Seattle Seahawks, again, haven't been this high in a very long time, have an opportunity to start the rebuild right. And then Washington, a team with legit playoff aspirations in the NFC East, could be looking to make a big move, solidify that offensive line, and give Carson Wentz the best chance possible in order to push for the playoffs. But with all that being said, that is life for you guys today. Let me know down in the comments below, what teams would you expect to be calling the Detroit Lions? At this point, what teams do you think have called Allen Park? Do you think called Brad Holmes and asked what the price of number two would be? I'd be very curious to you guys think and be very curious to hear what trade scenarios you think the Lions could be assessing. But with all that being said, that is life for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching and until next time, and as always, Go Lions!